Hey everybody, this is Jen. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you step by step how to make Castile soap. You can use the steps that I'm sharing in this video today to make any type of soap once you figure out the recipe and I'll talk all about that right here today on Garden Jen's Journey. So recently I made a, a soap, my dandelion soap, and I had a request to show the whole way that I do soap making. Well, because I do soap making as a business, I don't share my exact recipe for the soaps that I make for my business because it's taken me years to get the soap just the way that I would like it to be when I sell it to my consumers. However, I will be able to share with you the way to make soap by sharing a very simple recipe. And once you figure out how to make soap using this recipe, you can then go out there and combine different oils and things to make whatever soap that you would like to make. There's quite a few books out there on soap making that include different recipes for different styles of soap. And you're free to pick and choose whatever works for you once you kind of get the basis down. Now I've been soap making for uh, about six years now, so I have quite a bit of practice. And like I said, um, the recipe I use for my business, it took me a while to tweak it to get it to exactly what I want for my customers. I'm going to be sharing with you the Castile soap recipe, which is very easy because it only includes one oil. True Castile soap is only made with olive oil. There are other, are other Castile soaps out there that use plant-based oils, so they kind of put that under the Castile category, but true Castile soap only has olive oil in it. So to keep things simple, that's the soap we're going to be making today. And again, this is going to be step-by-step step on how to make soap, cold process soap. If you're new to soap making, I uh, encourage you to watch the whole video start to finish. I'm not sure how long this video is going to be because I want to make sure I cover every base for those who may have never made soap before. If you've made soap before, you can feel free to fast forward on through to whatever part you might, might want to uh, refresh on or whatever. Um, but let's get soap making. Okay. So, step one, what are the ingredients that you need to be able to make soap? There's three ingredients, and this is to make cold process soap right from scratch. Cold process soap from scratch does use a chemical called lye. This is lye right here. Um, this I got from Essential Depot. I also buy lye from Wholesale Supplies Plus, and I'll put the links in the description box below. You used to be able to buy this um, in home uh, supply stores and such, um, but it's getting harder and harder to find the lye that is a pure lye. Most of the lye is now, um, which by the way is drain cleaner. That's what this is. It unclogs your drains if you have a problem. Um, but most of the drain cleaners that they have nowadays are either in liquid form or if they have the powdered form like this, there's so much other crap in there. You don't want to use that for soap making. So um, research online on Amazon if you want or go to Essential Depot um, 
or Wholesale Supplies Plus or other reputable soap making supply companies to get the lye that is made for soap making because it doesn't have all those impurities in it. So this is very important to have. Next you have oil and like I said we're doing Castile soap which is, uses olive oil. You will notate that this is just regular cooking oil. There's nothing fancy about it. So just regular cooking oil will work. Then you need water. Why do you need water? Well, you have to dissolve the lye in order for it to work. So you dissolve the lye in some water before you mix it with your oil. Now I want to stress that this is chemistry and with chemistry you have to be careful that you mix the components in the right amounts or you're going to have a disaster. Um, when the lye and the oil combine they make soap. The process is called saponification. That's where the name soap comes from the chemical reaction of these two ingredients. If done correctly, if you have measured your ingredients correctly, when the chemical reaction is complete, there is no lye left in the soap. There is no oil left in the soap. They have combined to make soap. So those who are afraid of lye soap don't be. If you do it correctly when they combine they make a completely different product and there is no more chemical in there. So very important I will show you how you uh, do the calculations to make sure that you calculate the amount of lye and the amount of oil and the amount of water necessary to make your soap correctly and once you've done it once you have the idea and if you decide to change your amounts of how much soap you're making and whatever you're gonna have to put that information back into the soap calculator which I will put a link to in the description box below um, but it's very easy to do um, it does all the calculations for you you just have to read the recipe and follow it and we'll go into more of that in just a moment. The next thing that you need to have is you need to have a mold. Uh, something that you're going to put the soap batter in to make your soap. And uh, you can buy pre-made molds. Uh, there's a lot of them available on the market. I got this one from Amazon and it's a bar mold. Uh, perfect size for guest molds or guest soaps or things like that. Um, I will leave the link to this below. Um, and then uh, my husband out of scrap wood made me what is called a loaf mold. And I'll warn you, it doesn't look very pretty because it's scrap wood. This is a loaf mold. You make a loaf of soap, then you're going to take it out of the mold when it's done and slice it up into individual bars. This is the quickest way to make a whole bunch of soap um, for a lot of people. Um, I do line that with freezer paper so the soap isn't in contact with this icky wood um, and you can get your soap out. But that is the mold. And it's important to know what you're going to be putting your soap batter in to mold your soap because that gives you the information you need to calculate your recipe. Uh, to calculate soap recipes, you need to know the volume of the container you're going to be putting your soap in. Volume is length times width times height. So we're going to take the one my husband made for me, this one here. This thing is 17 inches long. It's three 
inches wide and three inches tall three inches tall so you take those measurements length times width times height and you get your volume and then there's a special number that you multiply by and I'll put that in the ticker right here because I don't have it memorized uh, there's a special number that you multiply your volume by to get the amount of soap batter that you need to fill this container and I have already done that um, I have used soap calculators for a long time so I already have that information input and I will share that recipe with you right now okay for my mold uh, the one I just showed you I need 84 ounces of soap batter to fill my mold so when I put that information in to the soap calculator and then I put what oil I am using to make my soap it calculates how much water and how much lye that I need to make the soap to fill that mold this is my recipe no I don't know if the there we go I'll pick it up see all those numbers there and all these numbers are important for different reasons the top here the top here is the size of my mold and then how much percentage of water that I want to use for my water discount and for new soapers I recommend you do not change that amount I think it's currently set at 32 I can't see right now <laughs> but anyways you don't change that amount and then uh, it continues on down and you'll see right here this is the recipe um, it tells you how much olive oil that you need to use and up here I'm sorry up here it tells you how much water and how much lye that you need to use with your oil to give you the 84 ounces of soap batter so let's see what we got here so I measure in ounces because of the size of my mold some people if they're making huge slab molds like the ones who are a little bit bigger than me are some commercial people uh, they measure in pounds some people who are just making a small small batch they will measure in grams so that's why there was those three columns so according to my recipe here I need 29.4 ounces of water I need 10.81 ounces of lye and then for my oils let's see what do I need 84 ounces of the olive oil and when that's all mixed together that gives me the right amount of batter to go in my mold if I were going to put fragrances in it the fragrance was at the top um, top right there uh, the fragrance was 2.63 ounces of fragrance oil that's how much fragrance you can put in here that will be safe you can always use less do not use more and it's very important to stay as close to the weight here as possible remember we are working with chemistry and to be able to make the correct chemical reaction happen we have to have the proportions correct I'm not going to get into what those other numbers are right now they're just different values that help uh, you decide what you want to do with your soap as far as it's if it's creamy or lathery bubbly things that you know people want in a bar of soap and so that's what those other numbers are but um, I'll discuss that at a, another time so I'm gonna set up my counter here and I'm gonna show you how we go ahead and we weigh out our 
product and get it ready to make soap. Okay, so first things first. Um, before I start mixing my lye and my water and getting my work surface all icky, I want to get my mold lined. And so I try to do that when the surface is dry so my liner is dry. So what I do is I use freezer paper. Very good to use. It helps uh, release your soap very well. And uh, I've used this for years. I have made a rubber liner, but I have not tried it out yet. Um, I'm a little scared too because it's so wimpy wimpy. Um, but for demonstration purposes, we're going to use the freezer paper method and I'll show you how to do this. If you are using a silicone mold or a silicone lined mold, you do not need to do this step. The silicone is good enough. But since my mold is raw wood, we need this. So I take my paper and I make sure that it's going to completely cover the mold from end to end with extra room. Okay, so I want my paper to be shiny side down. I do that because the shiny side is what the mold, the soap is going to be touching. And I want to keep it as clean as possible. And because we're folding it into itself, that's the side that you want down. So we're going to center this over my mold. And I'm pressing down to make sure there's enough clearance that's going to cover the mold. Okay. Now that I'm happy with the placement of the paper, we're going to go ahead and mark our mold. So how we're going to do that is we're gently going to take our fingernail and press along the inside of the mold to make a crease. And you want to do this gently because you do not want to tear your liner. Okay. Now you have an outline of your mold. Now we are going to fold on the creases that we just made. So I first fold up one of the shorter ends here. Fold it up to the crease line. And I generally go about a centimeter or two uh, further in than the crease line just to make sure that this slides into the mold. And then we're going to crease this really well. Okay. Now we're going to turn this 90 degrees and do this again. I turn it 90 degrees and do the long side against the short side. That way I know that I have a 90 degree corner. If I were to do just this side and this side, my corners might not be completely 90 degrees and uh, so the sides might not line up exactly. Things are a little tight here because I have my incubator on the table. Gotta take this out of camera view just so I have room to fold this here.
I'm basically doing the same exact thing as I just showed you. So now we got two sides done. Turn it 90 degrees. Do it again. And now when we do this, we actually have a line that we can line up to try to make sure that all of our corners, once we get it folded, are square. I'm gonna line this up. And crease it again. And then the same thing. And then when I fold this one up, I'll have two lines to match to make sure we get our 90 degree corners. Okay, now we've got our liner all folded and creased. Now it's time to cut out the corners so we can actually make our liner. But one of the things you wanna do is make sure that you leave an overlap when you cut this out. Uh, that way it overlaps the other edge and helps prevent leakage. You don't want your soap batter to leak. So I'm gonna grab the scissors and we're gonna cut out our corners. So I'm going to cut along this line here all the way to the corner, like so. But on this line here, I'm going to go out about two inches. I want to cut there. Okay. You see we got a flap there and you want that. We're going to repeat on the other three corners. We've got our liner all folded, all cut, all ready to go. It's now time to put it into the mold and get it specifically tailored to fit in there. I'm going to fold the, in, the long ends in first and then the short ends because we want the flaps to roll around the long ends. And we're simply going to put it into our mold like so. Now we need to do the tailoring, so to speak, to get this to fit in here exactly. And it just takes a few seconds, really. You want to put your hand down in and go along your creases to make sure that your paper is sitting flush down into your mold. And then we're going to cut our seam, or our crease, all the way down to the top, all on four corners. Okay, so now that's all cut. You might be like, well, why did you cut it off way up here? It's a lot easier to cut off once you know you have the measurement right than to cut off and be wrong on your measurement and be 
screwed. <laughs> so I just leave it long until I completely get it all situated and then I'll cut off the excess. So now we have a flap that goes this way on both ends. Then we have these that go this way and gently just crease it at first to get it going along the edge like so. So it's kind of forming already. Oops, and this is not where it's supposed to go. It's supposed to be on the outside. Right. Okay. So now we've got a rough crease going where this is going to sit. Now we're going to get some tape and we're going to start taping it and trimming it as needed. Okay, so I have my tape here. Alright, now this is where we want to definitely make sure that it's nice and seated in there. And then we're going to crease this really well and tape this to the side of our mold so it doesn't move. And then we can trim off this extra here. The same for the end. We'll go ahead and we got quite a bit here, so we're gonna go ahead and trim off some. And again, making sure that's tight down in there. We don't want it floating. That's not good. We're just going to tape it. And work our way around the mold. Okay, our mold is lined and ready to go. So we're going to set this off to the side and we're going to get mixing our lye water. All right, so these are the tools that you need to mix your lye water. You have a plastic pitcher for your water. You have a uh, disposable cup to measure your lye. You have a digital scale. Very important to have a digital scale. And you can see mine's quite dirty because I've used this thing for like four years, <laughs> but a digital scale. I also have a hot pad because the chemical reaction between the lye and the water reaches temperatures upward of 280 degrees. So you really don't want that sitting on a surface by itself. You want to have protection. And so I have a couple of hot pads that are specifically designed for lye making. One thing about making soap, with lye especially, is you do not want to use um, the same containers for soap making that you use to cook with. Because lye, you don't want to mess with it. If, if there's any residue of lye, that could prove disastrous if you, if you use it to cook with. So make sure that you set apart your cookware from your soap making. I have a stainless steel spoon. You can also use a silicone spatula. I have marked this so I know that this spoon is for soap making only. I don't know if you can tell in the video or not. Let's see if I can get this to focus. Not sure if you can see that how dark that spoon is because of the chemical reaction of the lye. You also want to wear gloves. Um, I get to a point where I don't all the time because I'm so used to working with this that uh, I'm pretty careful. But sometimes I do end up getting a chemical burn because I've been a little dipsy and spilled it on myself. So gloves for safety. And also if you don't wear glasses like I do, you also want to wear goggles for safety. And if you also have respiratory sensitivity, wear a mask. 
When the chemical reaction starts, it starts putting out vapors and fumes that are irritating to breathe and they will burn your eyes. Um, so you want to do this in a well-ventilated area as much as possible. Some people do it next to their oven with the vent hood on to suck up those vapors. I have a large enough kitchen space where if I open my window and just exit the area for a little while, uh, you know, the vapors dissipate on their own. But if you, you definitely want to make sure that you use safety precautions when you first start this process. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how that works. <clears throat> All right. Again, I'm going to look at my recipe here that I showed you. And according to the recipe, I need 29.4 ounces of water. So we're going to set the water here on my digital scale and turn it on. Make sure that I have it on the ounce setting. Um, this has pounds, ounces, and grams. So I want to make sure that I have it on the ounce setting. And then... I'm going to use distilled water. Uh, you should use distilled water. That way there's no uh, materials in the water that might react funny with the lye or the soap during the chemical process. Distilled water has absolutely no chemical or uh, like any ma materials in it. It's just water. So we're going to measure this to 29.4, I think that's what I said, yeah, 29.4. There we go, 29.4 right on the dot. We're going to move this off and put it on the hot pad here, get it ready. Then we're going to take our disposable cup and set it. And we're going to tear our machine so it clears everything out and it's back to zero. Very important that you get your measurements right. Like I said, this is a chemical reaction. You do not want to screw this up. All right, here's our lie. And there is two different types of lie. Uh, there is sodium hydroxide, which is what this is, that makes solid bars of soap. There's also potassium hydroxide, which makes your liquid soap. So you want to make sure that you have the right lye for the right soap. All right, so we need, gotta look at that again, 10.81 grams. Okay, so with this particular scale, it only goes in increments of five. And with lye, I'd rather be on the safer side by having less lye than too much. So since I can't do 10.81, we're gonna do 10.80. So we're gonna take just a little bit here with our spoon. A little bit more. All right, we're at 10.80. All right. Now we're going to take our water, and we're going to carefully put the lye into the water. You do not ever put water into the lye, or you will have an explosion. Not safe. So carefully putting the lye into the water and don't be over top of it when you're doing it. Otherwise all that vapor is going to come into your face. Stand back and add it in. Okay. 
Now, unless you're going to be making more soap, and, and you can put this with this, throw this immediately away so somebody doesn't accidentally grab this and use this. So I'm going to carefully stir this to try to make sure we get those granules dissolved. You do not want to splash this on top of yourself or you will get chemical burns. This is what, why people are afraid to deal with lye because it can be dangerous. But if you use common sense and you take your time, you're perfectly fine. All right. I don't know if the camera can pick it up or not, but there definitely is steam coming off this. I will see if the camera can read how hot this is at the moment. We're sitting at 165 and it's going up. <clears throat> well, we're going to let this set for about an hour, maybe two hours because we want this to cool back down. For soap making, you generally don't want your soap and your lye mixture to be above 130 degrees. So you have to wait for the lye to cool down and you can quicken it by putting it in a bowl of ice water and doing it that way, but you're just asking to, to accidentally splash this on yourself. So it's best to just set it to the side let it cool down on its own. <clears throat> Since we're using a large amount of a single type of oil, I'm going to use this large container to start measuring it. And then I'm going to dump it into the main bucket that I use to make soap. <clears throat> so again, we need 84 ounces of the olive oil. We're going to go up to 44. Okay. I'm going to pour it into my big bucket. Set this back on the weight. Zero it out again. And do another 40 ounces of olive oil. <clears throat> so I'm just making sure that I get all that oil out because remember it's a chemical reaction so it, just as important it is to have the lye measurement right it's important to have your oil measurement right. Not enough oil, and you'll still have lye left over in your soap, which will make it very dangerous to use. So there we go. Now we just gotta wait for the lye to cool down, and then we're gonna go ahead and make soap. Okay, so we are ready to go ahead and make our chemical reaction here and make soap. I covered our bucket of oils, that way they didn't get any dust or anything in them while we were waiting. But now we're gonna go ahead and uncover and get ready to rock and roll. One of the things that you need for soap making is what is called an immersion blender or stick blender because you need to be able to mix the soap and the lye together until that chemical reaction starts taking place. You could mix by hand, but that would take a long time. So with using a stick blender, the chemical reaction happens in minutes, not hours. <laughs> so before I get mixing, because this process can happen quite fast, I'm going to tell you what we are looking for. When we start mixing, we want to end up with a batter that is at what we call trays. And that means that when we have our, our uh, batter dripping off, that it's going to leave a trace on the mixer here. Um, if you make 
like custards or gravy you'll know the difference you know when it's really liquidy and then it starts to thicken up you want it right where it just starts to thicken that way you can pour it into the mold if you get it too thick it's almost impossible to work with so that's why we say you want to get it to trace right at the point that when you draw your fingers across it you can you can see that there's a trace left on okay so you see right now it's kind of clear there's nothing going on so we're going to slowly add the lye water into our oils and you want to try not to splash this there we go okay then we're going to take our stick blender and we're going to do this on high and again try not to splash yourself until it makes trace and I'm gonna go ahead and mute this part because it gets kind of noisy okay you see how the color has changed this is how the chemical reaction is starting to take place but still it's it's quite liquidy it's not quite at trace yet just a little too thin so we're going to do just a little bit longer okay now you can see how there's a, a trace of my fingerprint there that's right where you want it that way you know that it's completely emulsified the oil and the lye are chemically bound to each other and the reaction will continue to occur until the mixture is made into soap what we want to do now is we want to get this poured into the mold as soon as possible because the thicker this batter is the harder it is to get it into the mold and be a nice smooth product so we're simply going to pour it in And actually this was a little too liquidy it's still it's probably going to seep through my my liner here but we'll see when we unmold this tomorrow but this is soap I'm going to wait about uh, five minutes or so and let it set up because it is still a little liquidy and then I'll show you the next step okay now that this is set up a little bit more it's not so liquid I can actually add a texture to the top and I'm going to spray it with rubbing alcohol and what the rubbing alcohol does is it prevents the um, non-toxic components of the lye what to, that uh, evaporates to not evaporate so quickly that it leaves that ash film on top of your soap which is called soda ash Again, it's not toxic, but I don't know if you would like the look of ash on top of your soap. So this prevents it from evaporating too fast. So I'm going to take a fork. I would like to use this for texturing just to do simple textures. And again, I've marked it so I know not to use this for eating. I'm just going to draw some lines like so. There we go. You see how cool of a texture that is just by squiggling the fork a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to spritz this with the alcohol. Okay. And then we're going to let this sit for at least 18, um, preferably 24 to 48 hours maximum. Uh, I find that 24 hours tends to be just right. Sometimes you can go as little as 18. Sometimes you have to go as long as 48. 
It depends on the exact recipe you use, what additional fragrances you might use, as to how fast this sets up to be a hard bar of soap. And you need it to set up to be kind of hard so that when you cut it, it doesn't smush in your hands. So we're going to let this set in a place that's going to be protected from dust and all that good stuff. And then I will bring you back here and I will show you how we cut this up. Okay, so welcome back. Today we're actually going to get into the cutting of the soap. It took a little bit longer than I had thought because it is a Castile soap. It does take a little bit longer to cure and, and harden up before you can actually cut it. If you try to cut it too soon, you're going to end up with a glob that's just all mishmashed and everything. So it's best to wait. So I'm going to go grab the uh, loaf of soap and I'm going to show you some different ways that you can cut it. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here is the finished loaf of soap that we did. You see how beautiful it looks. Um, it is kind of ashy on the top, so it did evaporate a little faster than I wanted. But overall, it's still really pretty. Now the tricky part comes getting it out of the mold because it is quite a tight fit. So I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, loaf out of the mold. Okay, so we got the soap out of the mold, and to sh show you how real we are here on the homestead, this is the first time I've had this much difficulty in the four years I've used this mold. Um, the batter was a little too runny, as I had showed you in the beginning, it was just a little too runny, so it did leak through the uh, corners and it stuck to the mold and I actually had to break my mold to get the soap out of there. So luckily I have one more mold that's like that so I can continue to make soap but uh, this is what it looks like and right now it doesn't look too pretty because it's got all that stuff on it but it's on the bottom of the liner so it's still usable. We're going to go ahead and unwrap this and get it ready to cut. Okay, so this is the soap off the paper. It's nice and clean. Now there's a couple of different ways that you could cut this soap. If you're brand new to soap making and you don't have all the fancy dancy tools, that's fine. You can still cut soap. One of the ways that people do them is just to use a simple knife. And I don't have one of those knives right now, but um, the general idea is you just, you know, like a you would a big block of cheese or something is you just cut down the length of soap to get your bars. Um, other people use a tool that's similar like this. I'll put a link in the description box below of what this looks like. So I'm simply going to take this soap cutter and we're going to cut into these bars of soap. See what we got here. I set that one off to the side because that's the end piece. They don't always look the prettiest. Alright. So now we have a bar of soap. So I'm going to cut all this all the way down. Like so really nice simple bar of soap get some of the pieces off from previous bars and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this whole loaf and then I'll meet you back in just a minute
Okay, so these are our bars of soap ready to go into the curing rack. And basically all it is is uh, I just take these bars of soap and set them up. See if I can do it for example here on this tray. Kind of give you an idea. So I take them and set them on uh, a shelf and you want about a half an inch to an inch apart so they can get good air circulation and then they sit and cure for four to six weeks. Being that this is Castile and it's extremely soft I'm going to let this cure for six weeks and what that does is it allows the excess water that's in here um, because you had to dissolve the lye in water in order for it to be able to react with the oil. That water has to now evaporate out of these bars. So that's what the curing time does. You could almost wash with these in about two weeks and it would be fully completely uh, saponified. The chemical reaction would be complete. But if you try washing with this in two weeks, this bar is just going to fall apart. Like those really cheap bars you get in the stores. So you let it sit for four to six weeks, let, uh, that way the water can evaporate, gets nice and hard, and then you can use it and it will last a long time. Um, my particular size here, these are um, basically two and a half by three inches I think, and then uh, just under an inch wide. If they are kept where they dry out after each use, these last about a month. So um, it's a really good way to uh, make your own soaps that you know what is in them and they last you a long time. So I hope this uh, tutorial was helpful even though we had a few hiccups. That's the way life is. If this tutorial was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with those who you might think would be benefited by learning how to make your own soap. If you have it, subscribe to my channel. That way you can keep updated on other videos I do, whether it's tutorials, vlogs, recipes, or whatnot. Um, so go ahead and hit subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified of exactly when I upload those videos. This particular batch of soap will be available for sale um, as after it cures. So uh, May 1st of 2021 is when this will be available and you can check out my Etsy shop which this link is in the description box below for all the different types of soaps and bath and body products and tie-dye t-shirts that I make so I just thank you so much for watching everybody and I hope that wherever you are you are wonderfully blessed bye bye